This video is brought to you by Jiffy Loop. <laughs> Very nice. How long can you keep going? <laughs> can you make it all the way to the end? You're watching Top Flight Family. We're the Sinyovi family from New York City. And last year, we visited 21 resorts in 2021. Now that major cities around the world have reopened, this year, we're visiting 22 cities in 2022. This is city number 13. We rented a two-bedroom apartment in downtown Atlanta through Sonder. If you're not familiar with Sonder, it's an alternative to Airbnb. Instead of renting from a random person, you rent directly from Sonder itself, and they professionally clean, maintain, and manage the apartments in-house. That way you get a consistent experience. Plus, there's no crazy list of household chores you have to do before checking out. Our girls aren't old enough to drive yet, but what they are old enough for is go-karting. We headed to Andretti Indoor Karting and Games in Marietta. And yes, this place is indeed named for its founder, legendary racing driver, Mario Andretti. Hi everyone, it's Sean and Ella, and let me show you what I got to eat. So, I got this pasta, and I came with bread, and I got fruit with it, and then it says design your own helmet. So, this is what I did. It's got like leaves and it's purple and like red and like orange and it looks beautiful. Also, I'm drinking lemonade. Bye guys. Hi, it's Ella. It's an Ella cam. So I ordered some delicious pizza with french fries. Yes, I know that these two do not like match, but it's, <laughs> it's okay. Bye. All right, so Sean has been studying Spanish so on Duolingo. Yes, so we're gonna show off Sean's fluent Spanish now, okay? This is not sponsored, but if you guys want to sponsor us, we're big fans of the app. Trigger warning, I've only been learning for a little over a week, but you guys are gonna be blown away. Yo necesito niña arcade. That means I need girl arcade. There is no girls arcade. <laughs> Ella, what's some Spanish you've learned? I just did Duolingo, Duolingo, so, but then there's this hard level that I just unlocked and I cannot do it. Like, it didn't even tell me what Wait, the words are. I know, I know something. Black plus white equals gris. <laughs> that was the other word gris. that she was obsessed with a couple days ago. <laughs> So what you think? The last time we were in Atlanta was back in 2018, and unfortunately it was a very short trip. So we didn't have time to check out the famous aquarium here. This time around though, we made it a priority. We met up at the Georgia Aquarium with our friend Erica and her husband Matt. <laughs> As you'll see, they recently became first time parents. Oh wow, look at you! Look at you! Like, guys, come. Get some groceries and then something interesting happened in the parking lot. 
Bob. Yeah, so we went to Publix, which we love because they don't have it in New York. And uh, we're about to leave, and this lady has this book, and she's selling this book. She's like, yeah, I have the blueprint If for entrepreneurs, if they want to make millions of dollars, you buy this book, it's only 20 bucks. I've given all the secrets away, and I was like, yeah, that's good, you know, but we're actually entrepreneurs already. And she's like, well, that's good, like, you need this book, and, you know, I'm being polite, but it just seems like... The bigger picture in Atlanta, everybody seems to be hustling. So we know a lot of people from New York that have moved to Atlanta and they've started businesses and things like that. So we wanna just figure out what's the deal like? Why is everybody moving to Atlanta to sort of do business and do better for themselves? So we're trying to figure that out. The next morning, we headed to Pond City Market. This building used to be a Sears catalog facility, but has since been converted to a cool mixed use space with lots of great restaurants and retail. Pond City Market is also connected to the Beltline, which is a 22-mile loop of trails that connects many different neighborhoods in the city. It's also home to some great street art, so we went to check out the murals there. Oh, hi! Hey! Oh, hey! Is this your friend? Yeah, that's, that's me. Oh, okay. I see you guys have the same, the same pose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. How long can you keep going? <laughs> can you make it all the way to the end? By the way, you may have noticed that we drove to Atlanta from New Orleans. We had originally planned to fly, but airfare was absurdly high. I'm talking like a thousand dollars per person for a one-way ticket. So obviously we weren't gonna do that. And instead we rented a car and got there after a six hour drive. Now chances are you have a road trip planned soon too. If so, here's a few tips to make your road trip that much smoother. Number one, have a dedicated trash receptacle. If you've ever done a road trip, you know that when you don't have a designated place to throw away your trash, your car quickly becomes a disaster zone. Number two, pack a cooler. Keep a stash of drinks and snacks in a cooler. That way you're not gonna have to stop every time someone gets hungry or thirsty. Number three, bring cleaning supplies. You always wanna keep lots of paper towels and wipes on hand because especially when you have kids in the car, there are going to be spills and sticky hands. Number four, head to Jiffy Loop before you hit the road. Routine vehicle maintenance is so important to keep your car safe on the road. And when your car is doing well, so are you. So trust me, you wanna head to Jiffy Loop before your next road trip. Okay, we are off to dinner. We're gonna meet yes. our friends a rich and jazzy life. If yes. you guys haven't checked out their YouTube channel, be sure to, they're also a traveling family. They especially do a lot of cruises. They are the place to go if you want to know all the best cruises for families. Um, so we're going to meet them for dinner, and this will be our first time actually meeting in real life, but we've been online friends for a while. Yeah, so this trip we've met everybody every single day. So, <laughs> and we got more people to meet. So this is we got a lot of friends here in Atlanta because, of course, everyone moves here. Yeah. Um, New York is emptying out. Everybody's moving over here. Um, Rich and Jazz are also former New Yorkers. I think they're from Queens. Oh, nice. So, yeah, they abandoned us. Yeah, that's real. <laughs> we understand. Hey guys, we're in the elevator. Hi. We have tangles. We got tangles from the store after Mama the five. photo shoot. Number five. It's fun. It's <laughs> oh, <laughs> the ASMR. <laughs> Our mini versions, <laughs> Sean and Ella. <laughs> so cute, you guys. Yeah, so nice meeting you. By the way, our family is visiting 22 cities in 2022, and Atlanta is the 13th one we've visited so far. Be sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on the next city we'll be visiting. Illuminarium is an amazing attraction in Atlanta that uses 4K laser projections to immerse you into a visual journey. When we were there, they were showing Wild, which is a safari experience. since ended
ended its run, but Illuminarium currently has three other experiences that look really cool, including one about space, one about Georgia O'Keeffe's art, and one that reimagines Lewis Carroll's Wonderland. That evening, we went to check out one of the newest food halls in Atlanta, Politan Row at Colony Square. Our friends Nita and Jared came out to see us, along with their two kids. We met on a Disney cruise way back in 2018, and we've kept in touch ever since. So we like it in Atlanta and it just seems like there's a lot of young entrepreneurs making a lot of money and it also seems like there's a lot of people that are like hashtag boss babe and this kind of stuff. Is everybody really doing that well here or is it just kind of like... I really do think the key to Atlanta's success in various industries is the accessibility. Like being able to get to the mayor or to get to government officials or to celebrities, right? Like you can get to them. So what do you think is the, the magic thing in Atlanta where you can start off in the music industry and be successful in the food industry? Well, that's almost impossible to be able to do that and be successful and monetize and, and do right. these things. Everyone here is about helping. We'll all go out and let's figure out, figure this out together, right? Um, you see it in the music industry, right? Yeah. You see Little Baby do a song and Future's on it yeah. and a whole, that, yeah. but then you look at New York and you see like- One guy on top. Right. For two summers. A lot of people came here for school, right? So you look at the HBCUs, you look at Clark Atlanta, Morris Brown, Spelman, Morehouse, and you look at like what they have produced. Like myself, I came here, I went to SCAD Atlanta. When you kind of travel around the campus, you're surrounded by this culture that it just exists of like, okay, everyone looks like me, right? I don't have to speak a certain way. I don't yeah, have to yeah. act a certain way. I don't have to even dress a certain way because there's no judgment. Atlanta just has this culture um, for every race, right? I, I think a lot of people say, oh, well, this is the black Mecca. It is, but every race, or, or we start to look at the companies that are starting to move here. Now we have Microsoft, Google, Mercedes, Porsche. Like home offices are moving in. Nike just moved here a couple months ago. Um, I think there's a reason yeah. that they're moving here for that. If you watched our video of the Disney cruise we took from New Orleans earlier this year, you'll remember our friend Chelsea. We had made plans to meet her and another friend for dinner the following night, but as we headed back to Colony Square, we ran into Chelsea a whole day early. Wait, mama, y'all are almost taller me. Oh my god. Look who we ran into. Oh, it's Chelsea. Oh, Jared had told us about Local Green, a great example of the kind of dynamic black entrepreneurship you'll find all over Atlanta. Local Green is a fast casual restaurant that brings healthy, affordable food to parts of the city that have historically been food deserts. Oh, did you think I would cry? Oh, did you think I would fight? Baby, you cross the line, and there's no way to make it right. Bella, what's that on your shoulder? It's Bella. It literally Elephant. Founder Zach Wallace had a successful career in the music industry before turning his attention to the culinary world. It turns out that Zach's son was helping out at this location on that particular day, and he showed us a very special part of the restaurant. It's amazing, you know, we write up sticky notes, you know, our customers come in, they write positive messages that they would like to express themselves, you know, mm -hmm. be well, be well. So we want everybody to come in, feel positive about the lifestyle that they're living in. Um, just on the right path mentally. So we just opened up in Disney Springs. So we have a food truck at Disney Springs now. Amazing. So that's our second location. That evening, we headed to Buckhead for dinner at Le Bon Nosh. Joining us were Chelsea, whom we had run into a day before our scheduled dinner, as well as our friend Lexi and her husband Jordan. You've probably seen their super viral TikTok about dropping kids off at grandma's. It was so popular that it even got featured on the Nick Cannon show. Hey, 
that was city number 13 of the 22 cities we're visiting in 2022. If you'd like to check out city number 14, just click that video right there. If you haven't already, please subscribe and turn on notifications. And follow us on TikTok and Instagram at Top Flight Family. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.